Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got a short little review of a really, really good knife. Uh, this is the, uh, it looks like it's pronounced Ruwaiki, but I believe it's actually pronounced Rake. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. P661. Uh, before we get started here, this is a $27 knife utilizing pretty good materials. And uh, I'm just going to be honest with you up front here before we talk about it, which we will. Um, this is an excellent knife. Uh, it's very hard to argue with at $27. It's one of the best deals I've seen in a long time, even considering we exist in a knife world right now where there are good deals everywhere, right? I'll link this down below uh, so you guys can check it out. It's really good. Uh, thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right. Let's go ahead and get a measurement um, of the P661. They also have it in black, I believe. Uh, this is about 6.6. It's a little over 6.5 inches. Blade length is under 3 inches, which is great for people who live in an area with a sub three inch blade law. This is pretty, I mean, there's no way to measure. It's absolutely like 2.85 inches. And then your cutting edge is coming in at something like 2.75. Just a couple of size comparisons today. How about up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 uh, and the Ontario Rat Model 2? This guy's definitely closer to the size of the Rat 2, but it is noticeably smaller, so keep that in mind. However, it has Nah, the cutting edge is about the same as the Rat 2. How about up against the Spyderco Para 3? There's a good look there. And last but not least, let's do the Benchmade Bug Out. Uh, I think that's probably enough there. How about carry profile? Um, I'm going to give you a, an example of the action here. It's not a full shot knife. This is running on a combination of nylon and phosphor bronze. You can see a big old fat nylon washer on one side and then probably... PB, possibly PB, and another nylon wash on the other side. I sometimes see that. Not a big deal. Not something I really care all that much about, especially at $27. Bucks. Um, this has a single thumb stud. You can probably force a front flip, but I don't think it was designed that way. Um, the thumb stud opener works just fine. Disengagement is pretty easy. It's kind of looking uh, what you're looking at there for action. But anyways, uh, thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. Nah, it's a little teeny tiny teeny tiny bit thinner. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. Where's the PM2? There it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is not going to be a difficult object to carry. Not long, not tall. It's just not a uh, cumbersome object any which way. Blade stock thickness. Let's get out my calipers, which desperately need new batteries. I know, I'm sorry, I keep forgetting. Um, yeah, we're looking at about 120 thousandths or, th or so, a little bit thicker than I would have expected, but okay, not that big of a deal. Wait, we are looking at, what are we looking at for materials before we weigh it? We're looking at a really, really nice 14C28N blade. The grind on it is nice, the finish on it, that's just a nice blade. This is again. This is a twenty-seven dollar pocket knife, fourteen C twenty-eight in. And it's not like the blade is just like blah, whatever. Here's a shape, sharpen it. No, it's pretty good. Weight coming in at two point three six ounces. Good ratios. Blah blah blah. If you don't subscribe to that, it's a two point three six ounce object. Pretty compact. Pretty easy to carry, and legal if you live in the United States. Legal in most places. I say most because I'm not familiar with all with the laws of all 50 states. Um, but uh, yeah, let me, sorry. There's like a little, it's like a fingerprint at the end of this. I'm going to wipe off. Um, but uh, anyways, um, yeah, so good ratios there. Let's do a hardware check. Get out my tools. As per usual, my tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. I'm fairly certain the pivot's going to be a T8. Let's find out. Yep. Um, and then there appears to be, there's a screw here, which is going to be a T6. It's not going to fit there. Then we have two screws to the pocket clip. I'm almost certain that if you take this 
uh, scale off underneath here, you're gonna see that there's another screw holding in the backspace, which is fine. It's not all T8 or larger like I'd prefer, but the hardware appears to be pretty minimal. And I don't think the build construction is all that complicated. Let's take a look at the inside here real quick. Um, this is my new, this is the flashlight I use for the channel now, and it's very inexpensive. Um, AAA flashlight, just, we've got like a low and a high, and then that's it, right? It's got the little bill clip or whatever you want. This particular version is titanium. They do aluminum. I think these are about 200 lumens. This is a $35 flashlight, and it just makes more sense for me when I'm reviewing. Um, and uh, yeah, I really like it. So you can check that out as well. Um, we are not looking at any internal milling in here. Um, it's just steel liners. But you know what? That's fine. It doesn't need to be because it, you know, it's a super lightweight object. So, anyways, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get through this review here. So we have G10 scales. This is absolutely G10, and they've kind of carved it out in here. It's not a perfect, it's it's not a normal chamfering, right? This creates for an okay ergonomic experience. It's fairly comfortable. It'll work. The pocket clip, you can feel it. The pocket clip is a hot spot. It's also mounted lower than it should be. We should never prioritize a screw over the position of the pocket clip, right? I understand people say, well, shallow carry is better for tactical scenarios. Really? That's this and attack? Come on, right? This, this knife in particular is, it should not have uh, a shallow carry. This, that makes no sense. There's no reason for that. But you know what? It still works. I don't like this gooseneck bill. It's weird. Um, it digs into your hand a little bit, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It's, the clip is probably about a C plus, and that's really the only thing wrong with the ergonomics, right? Everything else is okay. Uh, good, you know, position for your hands. And honestly, you can still get a full four finger grip on this guy if you want to, because it is utilizing phosphor bronze in combination with um, nylon for the washers. It means that you can get this thing pretty dirty. If you're going to leave this in your vehicle, or your truck, your junk drawer, whatever, and it's going to be rolling around and dirt and lint and what, the, all that stuff is going to stay out of the pivot, um, which is a benefit to both PB and um, uh, nylon washers. You're not going to have the action of a bearing knife, but yeah, this thing can be beat on, which it probably will be considering it's a $27 knife. Access to the liner lock, it's uh, been carved out there, so pretty easy actually to disengage it. No lock stick, nice area for, you know, the blade isn't the first thing to contact your thumb, it's that sharpening toil, so that's nice. The thumb stud is kind of like a, it's like a watch crown. Eh, it's okay, you know, and it's only on one side, which is annoying. Like, just have it on both sides, I don't understand, right? But it's fine, it works if you're right-handed. <laughs> If you're left-handed, you're gonna and you want this knife, you're going to have to figure out exactly how to reverse flick it, which is not super friendly. This is essentially that, like very specifically, a right-handed right right-handed liner. There's only one position for the pocket clip to be mounted, and there is a thumb stud on only one side, making it you know only something that a right-handed person could open. I don't know why they do this, but they did. So okay. Um, anyways, uh, the blade, like I said, very nice looking, very sharp, nice and thin down at the edge, absolute razor blade. That'll be a performer, <laughs> uh, a package opening machine. I mean, that's, I, you know, essentially what this is going to get used for. I mean, but, but you know what? It'll still, it's 14C28N, nice geometry. It'll stand up to being thrown around outside a little bit. It's obviously not a fixed blade. It's not a big overbuilt folding knife or anything like that. Um, but it's going to do exactly what it was designed to do, which is cut uh, and and cut some more. Um, so nothing in the cutting path. Even the thumb stud is, well, maybe an eighth of an inch. Um, but everything else clears it. Uh, nice little, just just a little bit of sauce, right? That little swedge right there, just, just kind of nice for looks. Uh, nice tip, very thin. You can see how much tapering is going on here. Um, really, really good. On this side, you can see here it says P661-B E47ECC00177. I have no idea why they insist on putting that on there, but they did. And then it says Sandvik 14C28N Steel, which, if you didn't know, is, in my opinion, probably the best budget knife steel available. Very tough, good edge retention, not incredible, right? If you're wondering, well, how does it stack up against a D2? 
Uh, D2, if it's properly heat treated, will absolutely have better edge retention than 14C28N. But 14C28N is way easier to sharpen, uh, super high toughness, and um, is uh, much better in the corrosion resistance department. Um, so this has an incredible balance of attributes that uh, you really want when you're, you know, in a, in a pocket knife. 14C28N is very, very good um, in terms of a pocket knife blade steel. So very nice. Um, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the rest. There is a little bit of peel ply texturing I'll point out, which is nice. It's not super aggressive. looks good. Fit and finish on this guy is just great. Like everything is so good. And they have uh, decided to do a lanyard bar instead of a lanyard hole, which is great. It's out of the way. We don't have to look at it. And the few people left on this planet who love lanyards can still put a lanyard on it if they really want to, right? Again, the one thing that really bothers me is the clip position, the, the bill shape on the clip and the clip depth. It does not need to be ultra deep carry to be good, but in this case, I think with the length of the clip and the fact that they just had to have this gooseneck thing, it needs to be deeper. This screw could have been literally anywhere else and it would have been fine. It didn't even need a, a, back, a wraparound backspacer. It could have just ended right here, or you could have done standoffs, in which case you could have just done one screw right here. We wouldn't have needed if there is. I'm assuming there are more. there's another screw underneath, right? But this is how they did it. Fine. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. There are recessed screws holding the pocket clip in, and they did recess the uh, little tab that holds the uh, clip to the scale. So that's cool. I'm glad that they did that. Uh, this side, you know, it's essentially the same as the other side. It's just not cut out to, you know, gain access to a thumb stud because there isn't one on that side. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, we have, uh, where's the stop pin? I think, yeah, it's right here. Stop pin's right there. No shouldering, doesn't need it. That's fine. Look at this little detail. I forgot to point this out. The, the um, spine is radiused. Not something we usually see on a $27 knife. Wow. Uh, we're 11 minutes in. I should have pointed this out in the beginning. This is not a new knife. This has been around for a bit. And it just, you know, I'm sure like many other hidden gems out there, it just kind of didn't really get a lot of lime light. I've ne uh, lime light. I've never heard of this knife before. I got it in the Going Gear EDC package, the monthly Going Gear EDC package. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, I just, I was like, what, what, where has this thing been? And apparently it's been around. It just, you know, not a lot of people knew that it existed, including me. So anyways, um, the, uh, uh, lockout, there's no blade play. And I mean that, like I'm really wrenching on it. No blade play whatsoever. Um, lockup is eh, fairly late, 65% or so, but that's okay. I'd rather it be late than early. Um, no up and down play or anything like that. No lock stick, no pivot lash, detent is nice. And look at that. We're perfectly, I think almost perfectly center, maybe just a hair off. Maybe something I can fix with a little turn of the pivot. Let's take a look. Let's just give it a, let's, let's just give it a go. Are we there? Are we mushed because it's nylon? Let's try. It's just a hair off. You know, I don't know that I really care. The action still feels about the same. How do we have companies who are having issues with fit and finish, right? Um, hey, Spyderco, your Chinese line? Like, yeah, your Taiwan line, great. US line, great. Pretty good, every now and then a little. Your Chinese line sucks. Why is it that Wright can make essentially a perfect $27 knife and uh, we got to pay a hundred bucks for some Chinese spider co's <laughs> that just have ridiculous, like uh, silly flaws that should never, ever, you know, be a thing. Anyways, this is not, this is not a video about coming down on Spyderco, because I actually really like Spyderco. I'm just, it's not, and it's not just Spyderco, but like this knife makes a lot of companies look bad, right? And I'm talking about, you know, ones that utilize Chinese OEMs, right? Because that's, we're, we're in a different ballpark here. Not going to compare this to, you know, U.S. manufacturing is different. I still 
you know, would like to, a lot of the U.S. manufactured knives utilizing similar materials like Kershaw, right, they cost a lot more money, but their fit and finish is also really, really good, right? So I feel like they're doing pretty well. But we have some Chinese OEMs that are doing this budget thing, and they cannot seem to get it right, but they want $40, $50, $60, $70, $80, dollars sometimes up to $100 for some of their stuff. $27. Yeah, uh, the thing with the clip is the only thing that I can complain about outside of that. It's like, this is such a good knife. If you, you know, if you want this to be your dedicated EDC knife, great, it's 27 bucks. You want it to be kind of a backup, maybe a junk drawer knife or, you know, that little pull out tray that you've got in your vehicle, throw it in there. It You got a pocket knife that's good to go. Or, I think better yet, this is a good knife to buy as a gift for somebody who's been carrying around a gas station uh, gas station junker for too long, right? If they like more compact stuff, but they keep pulling out that weird scorpion knife that's got like wizards and like flame. Can somebody explain to me like the graphic of the Royal Flush and it's on fire and it's got skulls and pool balls? Or what is that? What? Can someone explain that to me? What are you trying to say? The cards are on fire and something death and pool and what? So dumb. And then it's on a pocket knife that also is wizard scorpion themed. Okay, you know, if you have a friend who's carrying that around, uh, this this would be a cheap gift. You know, a birthday, uh, Christmas, or maybe it's just a regular Wednesday and you're just tired of looking at it. Um, yeah, this would make a great gift. This is a really, really nice knife and it is extremely recommendable. It's gonna go on my most recommended knives playlist. It's also gonna go on my cheap knives I like playlist. This is one of the most impressive budget knives I have ever reviewed. And I have reviewed a lot of knives. <laughs> That's gonna be pretty much it today. Um, this knife will likely get given away during one of my live streams. So if you are not uh, familiar with my channel, if you're new, I upload content every single day and I give a lot of stuff away. So if you'd like to get in on that or you just want to be entertained with some knife content on a daily basis, please subscribe. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.